anything extra that is needed. Cool. Awesome. Hey everyone, we'll just wait a few minutes to let people uh, trickle in. Sounds good. How's your day going so far? Yeah, pretty good. It's been busy. I know it's a busy season for all of us. Absolutely. This is my, um, my first time back in the office in a, a few months, so it's weird to be back. It's very quiet. Um, I have the whole 5,000 square feet to myself right now. So hopefully no one jumps in, but it is interesting to be back in an office as opposed to at home. Uh, but yeah, I'm yeah, glad we, here. we went remote in, uh, March, 2020 and we never went back. So did you still have a physical presence somewhere or is it all fully remote everywhere? No, we decided to go full remote and it's okay. Cause we're a distributed team now. And so it mm -hmm. works, uh, it works out. Wait a couple more minutes. Yeah, get started in a minute or so. Shall I start sharing my screen? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. How's the end of the year treating you guys? Is it super busy? Super busy. We are absolutely swamped. All right. Can you see my screen? I can. All right. Just let me know when I should get started and we'll get this going. All right, I think we can get started. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining. I know you're all really busy gearing up for the holidays, but we hope we can share a few tips to drive new customers this season and make sure you keep them coming back for the long term. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to pop them in the chat and we'll answer them towards the end of the presentation. Yep, and keep in mind, we're gonna sh uh, share a copy of the recording after the webinar is done. For anyone that needs it, it will shoot over email blast anyone who registered and maybe some other uh, people will share it on social and YouTube. So there will be more content to be had later. Awesome. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Vincent. I'm one of the co-founders at Spently. Spently is an app available in the Shopify app store that helps brands boost sales and increase customer retention. And the app is used by over 5,000 brands around the world. Uh, in 2020, we were actually able to generate over $75 million in revenue from repeat customers for brands, and we're actually uh, expecting to exceed $100 million this year. Awesome. Um, so not as exciting of a background as Vin, but definitely happy to be here. Uh, we've actually been partnered with Spently now for about a year. And a lot of the reasons that we decided to partner together, Spently and Smart Sites, is because of the topic we're talking about today. Um, marketing can be challenging. And when we bring in customers, it's really important to find a way to bring them back strategically. So that's where the Spently partnership comes in. But a bit about me before we get into the webinar. I've been with Smart Sites now for a bit over 10 years. So digital marketing has been a big part of um, my life, about a third of my life. And I really love learning about new things, new tactics, and sharing them with um, people like you who are here to listen. Um, so I did a bunch of events this year, and hopefully we'll have some more exciting, even in-person events next year, but really happy to, to be here. So thanks, Vin, for setting this up. All right, so quickly jump into Smart Sites, and then we'll get this thing started. So Smart Sites is a full-service agency. We do design, development, SEO, and paid search. Today's topic is mainly going to be focusing on the marketing aspect, specifically on, on the paid search. And then we'll pass it over to Vin and talk about how can we get those customers back into the funnel. Um, although we've been in business for a little over 10 years, we've been able to achieve a lot in that 10 year time, uh, growing from a team of five to a team of over 200 and uh, growing to actually 500 plus five star reviews in the past 10 years and being named in 5,000 for five years going on, on six. So a lot of credentials come behind all the data that we're about to share with you and Again, uh, looking forward to getting started. So first question and one that I get asked almost daily is why should we advertise online? And the answer is relatively simple. I mean, it's where people spend most of their time. Here you can see probably one of my favorite websites. Uh, it's called Internet Live Stats. And what it does is share exactly that. It shows you things like how many users are being added to the web every day, how many emails are being sent every day, how many websites are out there. and as you can guess, those numbers are on the rise almost daily. And what we want to do is make sure we're able to capture as many of those customers as possible, especially as the number grows. And basically, 
online advertising is where everything starts. More than 80% of all decisions start with search. So people go to Google or their smartphone, you know, Apple or Android to ask a question or find a service or a product. So if you're not, you know, in front of them when they do the search, there's a good chance that you could be missing or you could be lost in that whole process. And as I mentioned before, people are getting added every day, but the customers that are already on the web, they're spending more and more time online than ever before. So in the past 10 years or so, um, the amount of hours spent on the internet is, as you can see on the rise, people are spending over four hours per day online, a lot of that being mobile. And if you actually equate what that four hours per day looks like, it's a little scary, but it's over 40 years of our life are spent online. So if you're not, you know, again, advertising to them on the web or reconnecting with them using um, email marketing techniques or, or tactics like that, you could be missing out on majority of the time where people are spent spending. And I think one of the most interesting things that has happened in the past year or so is the amount of e-commerce sales that have happened just from 20 to 20, 2020 to 2021. In the past year, there's been as much growth as there was from 2008 to 2018. So in short, there was basically uh, 10 years of growth all compacted into one year. A lot of it was driven by COVID. Less people were going out to stores. More people were spending time online doing online shopping. So being an e-commerce brand now is probably more lucrative than it's ever been before. And again, same thing. If you haven't even started advertising to your customers yet, it's not too late. We'll talk about some schedules that many people follow when it comes to like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, but there's really no time better than the present to get things started. And where to advertise. So there are certainly tons of options out there. Um, many of the services we offer are organic SEO, as well as paid Google search, um, Bing, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. But for the purpose of today's conversation, we're going to focus on Google. Reason for that is just you know, time constraints. I would love to have a conversation with everyone about each one of these services separately, but just to kind of go through maybe one focus, we'll talk about Google. And you know why Google specifically? It's just because it has such a dominating piece of the market share. Uh, over 85% of all of the searches actually happen on Google. If you look at this nationally, uh, or sorry, internationally, it's over 90%. This number here is actually just focusing on the USA, which is um, where a lot of the customers that we work with are based out of. Uh, the other 12 or so percent is Bing, Yahoo, and some other smaller channels. So the purpose of today's conversation, we'll focus on Google. And how much reach does Google have is uh, another question, and it's another scary one. Um, last year, Google reported $134 billion in Google ad spend on their platform. So it's a huge part of their business model that's spent, um, spanned across 4 million advertisers. And if you look at Google ads itself, if any of you have ever done it before, the costs can be a pretty wide range as low as 25 cents. Um, we, there's many average clicks that are 25 to 30, but if you were to look at e-commerce specifically, it's on the lower side, anywhere between one to $2. There's certainly other industries out there that have thousand dollar plus cost per clicks, which are pretty wild to think about. But uh, Google is uh, a big, machine that's out there and something that we are able to help get our clients in front of. Um, and that's why we're talking about that today. And, you know, why we're talking about this particular topic now is because that November, October, December period is when a lot of the spend happens and when a lot of the transactions happen. So Google actually recommends having about a 30% increase in your budget in that final quarter of the year because that's when you're going to be driving maybe a majority of your sales while it, you know, October, November, December only accounts for 25% of the years, a percent of the year, it can actually equate for maybe 40% of your sales. So doing things now and be spending more now could be really effective and lucrative. So what can I expect? It's such a challenging question because every industry is different. Every e-commerce brand is different. The costs can range very uh, vastly depending on what you're selling or where you're selling it. But before we can even get into that, I think you need to understand how Google works. Um, if you've ever been to Google Ads search, uh, sorry, Google Ads homepage, this is what you see. Um, it tells you how easy it is to set up a Google Ads campaign, which for the most part, it's true. You choose your keywords, you set your budget, you set your locations, and boom, you're up and running. But as many of you know, if you've run ads in the past, it's not as simple as that. There's so much more that goes in, into these settings. And if you just set it, did the, sorry, did this five step setup, sure, you'll have a campaign running, but very easily and very quickly, you'll probably be running out of budget and maybe not have too much to show for it. 
So here's a set of some best practices that we follow when we're starting out any sort of e-commerce brand or any brand in general. We're going to want to not only do those five quick steps that Google mentioned, but look into every single setting and subsetting that Google offers, uh, integrate things like shopping feeds, make sure your product titles are uh, clear and set. We have A-B tests set up. We have conversion tracking set up, which is important, not just for us, but for really any marketing you're doing. So even with all of these things you see here set, that's really not as far as it goes. Um, once even these things are done, you're going to want to look at everything that's happening with your campaigns and make adjustments. So if you were even to follow those five initial steps, plus those other 10 steps, you may think that's enough, but it, it's really not. You need to understand what people are searching for, uh, what ads are converting, which of those maybe audiences are, are converting, uh, remove keywords that are not performing. So there's a whole slew of activity that we certainly recommend anyone should be looking at. But if you don't have time to do this, which many people don't because they want to focus on growing their business, selling their product and uh, doing the logistics behind shipping, that's when agencies like us um, kind of jump in and are able to offer this kind of service to make sure your dollar goes as, as far as it can. And uh, a little bit later, we'll be sharing a case study of an e-commerce brand we've been working with now for about a year. Uh, Spentley actually has been working with them as well. So we can share some things that we've been able to achieve and then also uh, show what Spentley's been able to achieve with them. So quick introduction to that customer. Uh, they're Paul McCray Naturals. They're a woman-owned business out of Texas. They sell uh, different types of Baltic jewelry. And as I mentioned, they joined us, I want to say September of 2020. So a very interesting time to be online. And their goal, as with most businesses, is to sell more. They had a campaign already, already running on Google. They had considered uh, running some Facebook work, which we eventually took over. But their goal, again, like any other customer that comes to us, is how can I sell more? How can I scale? So the approach we took was to implement Facebook ads, Instagram ads. Eventually, later, we you know, integrated Pinterest ads. But um, the big focus of where their current spend was going when they first joined last year was Google. So that's where we uh, spent a majority of our time in the beginning initially setting up and we'll kind of show you what we're able to achieve. And one of the biggest challenges that they had was, although they were spending a lot on paid search, their costs, like most businesses on uh, Google ads were beginning to rise. The cost per click was on, on the rise. Um, their cost per conversion was increasing um, alongside of that. So they were basically seeing this, their money would uh, go into Google ads and they wouldn't see as much back, back from it. So what we did was go back to that list I mentioned before and start optimizing. We built all new campaigns, but once that was done, we didn't just kind of set and forget it. We went through all the steps that we would with any new customer and tried to better understand, again, where the conversions are coming from, what audience were they, what ads were performing the best, and start uh, funneling budgets accordingly. And to go through kind of what we expected in that 12, or not what we expected, what we actually saw in the first 12 months was, was this. So when they first came to us, their cost per click was relatively low. Uh, their conversion rate was very, very low, around 1%. So they're spending $1.38 per click and getting around a 1% conversion rate. Three months in, we were able to reduce that cost per click a bit better, but also double the conversion rate. So a lot of great things happen across the board. Six months in, things are looking even better. Um, we're at under a dollar cost per click and the conversions are at the highest they've ever been, at least for Google ads. And then month 12, which is not too long ago, things took a bit of a shift. Um, right now at the holiday season, there are more advertisers coming in. So as I mentioned, the costs are getting higher and that's the, that's true for pretty much every business, no matter how much we're able to optimize the costs are starting to creep back up. So conversion rate is still high, but the cost per click is back over a dollar. So what can we do to not help decrease the cost per click? Because we're going to try and make this number as good, as good as we can, but how can we get more of these customers we're converting? to come back to be repeat customers. And that's where Spentley was able to help drive uh, more additional sales, which uh, Vin will talk, talk about shortly. But despite all of our best efforts, while numbers look way better than they were uh, one month ago, things are going to be creeping back up, I'm, I'm sure, especially now around the holiday time as more advertisers jump into play. So Spentley and other channels like it are more important than they've ever been. And last thing I want to go over is just when should I start? And, you know, I've been getting calls for probably three months talking about planning Black Friday start Monday, um, even as early as uh, yes, yesterday, people were asking me, you know, is it too late to start for, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday? And I say, you know, it's not. Um, starting early is always good. Things seem to be starting earlier and earlier than ever before, like November 1st, which is not that long ago. There were 300K streams for Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas. So people are thinking about the holidays 
more than they were um, maybe maybe this time last year. Same for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Great, great song, by the way. <laughs> uh, not, not if you work in retail and you hear it like 10 times a day. Uh, but for a lot of people, I, I know that they stream it on, on loop. Um, and for us personally, like I've been inundated in my inbox with Black Friday deals, Black Friday emails, um, Cyber Monday specials. And this, again, seems to be happening may, much earlier than ever before. Crate and Barrel, I think, um, no, notoriously, but they actually started their Black Friday, uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales in September. So how they got to that date, I'm not sure, but people are just starting things earlier and earlier so that what used to be maybe a two or three day period of sales has become like a three month uh, sale fest. So you're able to capture them um, maybe as early as September to as late as you know December 29th, um, if you play, play your cards correctly. And a quick little schedule uh, I think might be worth planning for next year um, is to start thinking about what promotions you're going to be running, when you want to start you know, planning these promotions and actually maybe start executing sometime in September, October, make tweaks and adjustments in November based on you know what you see people respond to, and then get really aggressive um, that Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend, all the way up until maybe you stop shipping around for the holidays because there's still a lot of opportunity even after that Black Friday, Cyber Monday period ends to hopefully capture and convert some, some customers. So while um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday is right around the corner, I still recommend people getting started now. If going back to that uh, graph from earlier, you know, Google does recommend to spend more now and maybe even December. Uh, so there's still plenty of room to uh, get this get this started, even if it feels a little a little later than before. So that's everything on my end. Um, we'll be back for a little Q and A after uh, Vincent presents his, but happy to answer any questions after the uh, webinar. So thanks everyone. Awesome, thanks Matt. Um, so it's no surprise that <clears throat> brands acquire the ma majority of their customers during the holidays, but the question is how do you keep them coming back? Having a strategy in place to retain them is really critical to get a larger return on those high uh, acquisition costs. Um, so 64% of businesses report that customers acquired during BFCM have a lower lifetime value than customers acquired at any other time of year. So it's clear that a lot of people are shopping during BFCM, but many of them just aren't coming back to shop again. And so it's really important to attract new customers, but it's gonna be really difficult to build a sustainable business if you don't have a strategy in place to keep them coming back on a regular basis. Um, so just a few more stats to share. Uh, it costs five times more to acquire a new customer than it does to retain an existing customer. Uh, brands are 60 to 70% more likely to convert sales from existing customers. And repeat customers actually spend 300% more than new customers. <clears throat> and so this is why it's so important to have strategies in place to build customer loyalty um, long term. For example, you know, SMS is a really powerful channel to keep in touch with your customers. If your customers are willing to receive a text message from you, that means they wanna hear from you. Uh, another popular one is lifecycle email campaigns. So this isn't just a one-off email blast, but this is a cadence to keep in touch with your customers throughout the year. Um, and then loyalty programs. I mean, some of the largest brands in the world have offered loyalty rewards because they have proven to alter shopping behavior. And so you should definitely consider having a rewards program. But there's often there's one channel that's often overlooked and forgotten. And that is transactional emails. So what are transactional emails? So these are emails that are automatically sent to your customers based on interactions with your store. They typically provide information about a transaction, a shipment, or maybe a password reset. But what makes these emails different is you're actually legally required to send them and there's no customer opt-in required. So you are guaranteed that all of your customers are going to receive uh, these emails. 
And you may not realize it, but you're already sending these emails every day and you're likely sending hundreds or thousands of them throughout the year. I'll go through a few popular examples here. Uh, one is the order confirmation that gets sent immediately after a purchase. Another one is the abandoned checkout email. Uh, if you're selling in person or you have a physical location, the POS receipt. Um, there's also shipping emails. So you send a shipping email once an item is fulfilled or depending on your carrier, uh, a shipment delivered email once an item arrives. There's also a slew of emails related to your customer accounts. So a popular one is the customer account welcome email. Um, and what people don't realize is these are actually your most valuable emails because people are engaging with them. Uh, your customers are opening these emails because they want to know when their shipment is going to arrive or to ensure they paid the correct amount or got the right size. And so it's not uncommon to see an 80% unique open rate and a 300% total open rate because uh, customers are opening these emails multiple times. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I buy something, I'm really excited about what I just purchased. And I'm, I'm opening that email like every day to track the, to get the tracking number. Um, and so everyone's looking at these messages. So I'm going to share a few tips so you can take advantage of this high engagement to drive repeat customers. So one, um, you can actually showcase other products your customers may be interested in with product recommendations. So for example, if they bought coffee beans, you can display coffee mugs. This is a really great way to uh, get other complimentary items in front of your customers to encourage them to shop again. Another one is offering personalized and one-time use discount codes to incentivize customers to come back and shop again. And so these don't have to be generic discounts and you can actually set rules around how to configure them. So for example, you can include an expiry date. So the discount expires in three days or seven days or 14 days, um, just to add some urgency with that time limitation. Um, the discount also doesn't have to be site-wide. So you can have the discount only apply to certain products or collections. For example, if you have clearance items in inventory you want to sell, um, you can have the discount only apply to those specific items. And then lastly, I always like to say, uh, you can't manage what you don't measure. And so you're probably measuring your other email marketing activities and digital marketing activities but you should really hold your transactional emails to the same metrics and standards. Um, it's really important to track the performance so you can continue to optimize these for the best results. Um, and there's obviously the top of funnel metrics like open rate and click through rate. But what is really most important is understanding how much revenue these emails are generating for your business. And so one of the other things that Smart Sites was able to do for McRae Naturals was optimize their transactional emails to include branding, product recommendations, and discount codes. And after McRae did that, they actually saw a 23% increase in sales from repeat customers just by making this simple change. And so if they can do it and 5,000 other brands can do it, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, uh, that anyone can. And so I'll pass it back to you, Matt, to go through some of the key uh, takeaways. Yeah, I mean, I 100% agree with everything Ben said, but on my end, a couple of things to just consider is that things are getting more expensive. Customers are spending more time online. Um, think, yeah, so your ability to maybe get in front of them is being more is becoming more challenging. But that being said, there are still plenty of ways to get in front of them the right way. Uh, good ways to optimize your campaigns if you haven't done so so far. So if it's your first time um, getting out there, I definitely recommend it. If you tried before and maybe stopped, I recommend trying again. Or if you're doing it currently, maybe take a look take a look at your current campaigns and just see what improvements or optimizations can be done. Or give us a call; we're happy to give you a free audit of your campaign, uh, anything like that. Awesome. Yeah, and then just customer retention is a key part of growing your business, especially during the holidays when customer acquisitions are higher than usual. And the last one is leverage the email channels that your customers are engaging with most 
um, to include those upsell opportunities, those incentives to ensure they um, really keep coming back. Cool. Um, I see some questions here. I've been off this one. First one's for you. How long after I sign up will I start seeing results from Spendly? It really depends on your orders. Typically, the more orders you're doing, the more emails you're going to send, the more results you're going to see. Um, but I would say right away. I mean, every single one of one of these emails is a customer touch point. And so if you're not optimizing them, you're basically missing out on all those customer touch points after, after every sale. Cool. Uh, next one is for me, how much budget should we allocate to search? It's, I mean, it's such a hard question. Um, we have clients that are spending $2,000 a month. We have clients that are spending $2,000 a day and you know, everything above, above and below that. But what I typically recommend for my clients that are coming on board is to start where you're comfortable because with advertising, especially paid search, it's very scalable. If we're able to show you in three, six months, an ROI that you're happy with, let's say you're spending a dollar and you're getting $5 back, you know, why not spend a thousand dollars and get 5,000 back? Why not spend 10,000 and get $50,000 back? So as long as you're able to prove the concept, we're happy and able to scale it up with you. So definitely a good question. Yeah, it's an investment and not a, not a cost at that point, right? Absolutely. Uh, another one here, I already have Clavio or Clavio. How do trans? Sorry, how does transactional emails pair with that? Yeah, great question. This is a really common misconception. So most of our customers actually use Spently alongside Clavio. Um, Clavio is an amazing tool for sending bulk emails, automated flows, um, but they don't really do what we do. And what we really uh, specialize in is optimizing those transactional emails to uh, to drive revenue. Um, one more here. How long does it start? How long does it take to start seeing results from search? Um, so if we're talking about paid search, it's a bit quicker because, um, on the other side of things, there's SEO, which probably takes four to six months to start seeing results. You're creating content, you're building links, you're optimizing your site. Google slowly takes notice with paid search. You can literally, literally start a campaign tomorrow and start getting clicks tomorrow. How long does it take to be effective? I'd say probably about a three month period would be enough to build out the campaigns, test, optimize, and kind of see what, what works and what doesn't. But um, yeah, that, that'll probably be my, my recommendation is give it at least three, three months. Um, quite a question from me, even if you don't mind, just based on one thing you were mentioning before about like measuring, how many of your clients or customers come to you with like all the tracking already set up versus how many of them need help um, get, getting that piece kind of up, up and running? Yeah, that's another good question. So, um... Using the default Shopify emails, there's actually like tracking is not really possible or easy. Um, at least Shopify doesn't give you any in-house tracking. And so um, most of them come to us with no tracking at all. And so with Spently, we have a dashboard to give really detailed analytics on sort of if discounts were redeemed, where revenue came from, what's being sent, what's being opened, what's being clicked. Um, we also do add UTM tags. So if you're using GA as your source of truth, you could also see some results there. Cool. I think that is all the questions we have. Any uh, last words of encouragement or any other last takeaways you want to share before we, we break for the day? Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is perfect timing. Good luck, everyone, uh, during this holiday season. If there's anything I can do to help, feel free to reach out to me at vincent at spentleyhq.com. Yeah, same. Uh, if you have any questions or want to talk strategy for end of year or even talk about strategy for next year, happy to chat as well. Matt at smartsites.com. Uh, we can do an audit of your campaigns or talk about strategy. So anything you need, we are around. Um, thanks so much, Vincent, for uh, coordinating this. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. So thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.